revolutionary floor covering made of linseed oil, pigments, pine rosin, and pine flour. A century later, in the 1960s, newfangled vinyl flooring walked all over linoleum and eventually rendered it obsolete. Vinyl flooring owes its existence to a German chemist who in 1872 invented polyvinyl chloride, or PVC. PVC was considered a thoroughly useless substance until the 1920s, when an American researcher tried to make it useful by turning it into an adhesive. He didn't succeed, but in the process, he accidentally discovered that heating PVC in a solvent transformed it into a flexible plastic, what we know today as vinyl. Sheet vinyl flooring comes in a wide range of designs, some of which simulate ceramic tiles or hardwood flooring. As we see here under a microscope, vinyl flooring is comprised of three components. A felt paper backing on the bottom, a layer of vinyl foam in the middle on which they print the design, and a protective layer of transparent vinyl on top. To create texture, the factory applies an inhibitor to prevent the foam from expanding in certain areas. To make that vinyl foam, they first mix the powdered ingredients, polyvinyl chloride resins, or PVC, white pigment, and calcium carbonate, which acts as a filler, but also helps color the mixture white. In a separate mixer, the liquid ingredients, plasticizer to make the vinyl flexible, fungicide to prevent mold growth, UV stabilizers to prevent fading, and a blowing agent which they later activate to inflate the foam. They combine the liquid and powders and mix for another 15 minutes. After filtering the mixture to remove any lumps or paper bag fragments, the liquid foam goes to the production line. There, a large coater applies an even layer to a continuous sheet of felt paper backing. The coated backing then passes through an oven for about 15 seconds. The heat, 220 degrees Celsius, solidifies the liquid foam, fusing the PVC and adhering it to the backing. At this point, it's critical not to activate the blowing agent. The floor's design will be printed directly on this foam surface. A graphic designer creates the artwork by computer, then with a colorist, experiments with dozens of color combinations before deciding on which ones to use. The computer breaks down the final design by color in order to produce an engraved plate for each one. Then they test out the design on a piece of foam, printing one color after another until the design is complete. On the production line, printing works the same way. But because it's a continuous process, they use rotating cylinders rather than engraved plates. The flooring just rolls right through them, receiving up to six ink colors one at a time. A dryer dries the ink in between applications. it's time to apply the floor's top layer. This coat of vinyl is known as the wear layer because it'll be subjected to the wear and tear of walking. The wear layer protects the design printed on the vinyl foam underneath. Made of PVC resins and plasticizer, it goes on white but turns transparent once fused in the oven at 220 degrees Celsius. At the same time, the heat of the oven activates the blowing agent in the vinyl foam underneath, expanding it. To create texture, they use a process called chemical embossing, in which select ink colors contain a chemical inhibitor to suppress foam expansion. Wherever they print those colors, the foam remains flat. These height variations create relief and can simulate grout lines in imitation tile designs. To give the surface a sharper, more natural look, the flooring can proceed to a second process called mechanical embossing, in which an engraved roller imprints its pattern onto the surface. 
The gloss level of the flooring, meanwhile, varies with the chemical composition of the wear layer. Workers inspect the finished flooring as it rolls off the production line. It's 3.7 meters in width, wide enough for seamless installation in most rooms. The packaging is entirely automated. The equipment winds 30 meters of sheet vinyl flooring per roll.